support or shim stress testing application performance on Intel SGX. So we had originally set out to test the performance of applications when ported to run on SGX. We took a benchmark and ported it to SGX. And to compare the performance, we used an existing interface layer to run an unmodified version of the same program on SGX. We had assumed that direct porting would be faster, but the performance of both approaches was nearly the same. This surprised us, so we set out to investigate the types of workloads that would benefit from direct porting, since we had thought that they all would, but it hadn't been the case. SGX is developed by Intel and has been adopted into various areas, such as cloud computing and digital rights management. Intel SGX stands for Software Guard Extensions. They're a set of CPU instructions that help run programs in hardware protected areas of memory. These areas are called enclaves and allow users to run their programs securely, even in the presence of other malicious software, including the OS and hypervisor. An SGX application comprises of its own code, data, and the enclave. The enclave contains its own code and data as well. An enclave can access its application's memory, but not the other way around. A certain amount of memory is used for enclaves, which are stored in a dedicated area of memory called the enclave page cache. Enclaves are 128 megabytes by default, including some area reserved for metadata, bringing the usable size of the enclave to about 90 megabytes. A piece, a part of the SGX hardware on the microprocessor is called the memory encryption engine. This performs permission checks and encrypts and decrypts memory accesses between the EPC and on-chip caches. Other than size, there are also some limitations on what can be done inside an enclave. System calls, including networking calls or FLORC, cannot be run inside an enclave. The program needs to exit the enclave, make those calls outside the enclave, and then re-enter the enclave with the results. Because of the security measurements of SGX and limitations of what can be done inside an enclave due to that, there are some overheads involved with running programs on SGX. These include entering and exiting the enclave, encryption and decryption involved with memory accesses that take place between the main memory and the EPC, and EPC paging. When more, when more enclave memory is required than what fits into the EPC, the EPC page is switched out to main memory. This involves a significant amount of overhead, and the general consensus is to avoid it at all costs. So we make sure that none of our experiments involve paging. Given the restrictions on what can run inside an enclave and the size of the enclave, the programmer needs to think carefully about selecting what portions of the program and data will reside inside the enclave and decide how to partition and rewrite their code to do so. The decision boils down to the classic security versus performance spectrum with let's put everything in the enclave on one side, in which case everything is protected, versus let's put as little as we can in the enclave. Another approach is to use shimming, which involves a translation, translation layer that provides a general interface to allow whole unmodified binaries to run on SGX. The programmer doesn't need to worry about the finer points of splitting and porting their code. This greatly simplifies the development process, leading to a shorter development time, but possibly worsens performance. Initially, we'd set out to test our hypothesis that porting manually would be faster than shimming. Let's take a look at our initial results. We used a library called Graphene SGX as our shim layer, whose general approach is to pull the entire application into the enclave. 
LM Bench is a set of micro benchmarks that measure the latency and bandwidth of various operations. A parent process spawns multiple child processes and com which run the experiments, and then the parent combines the results from all the children. The benchmarks we looked at were reads and writes, random number generation, and the latency of system calls. We compared running the LMBench programs by porting to SGX. Since LMBench uses Fork to run multiple children in parallel by default, but Fork is unsupported by SGX, we had to implement a version called Forkless, a version of LMBench called Forkless, which is a single process, no threading. We then created an SGX version, which means we ported the Forkless version to run on SGX inside an enclave. Since this involved some glue code, i.e. for uh, passing arguments and function calls, so we created a version called non-SGX, which has the glue code, but doesn't actually call into SGX. And then we have a version that runs on graphene, which is basically the unmodified version of forkless. So we looked at reads, writes, copying, and zeroing a buffer. Here I'm showing you the results for read. This looks at uh, memory bandwidth. The buffer sizes range from 20 to 80 megabytes. Uh, here higher is better because we're looking at bandwidth. And we also looked at random number generation. Here, the time is in nanoseconds. And the shorter the bar, the better. So from here, we can see that forkless and no SGX have a very similar performance. And we also see that SGX and graphene have a very similar performance. So this we found surprising because we had expected that porting a program to run on SGX would have been faster. But these results showed that partitioning, that even though partitioning and porting code to SGX took much longer, there was almost no difference in the performance. So this called into question why anyone would bother porting their programs directly when the development time is much longer and it's much easier to run our programs just using a shim layer. In the, next of our, in the next half of our paper, we investigated cases when it might be useful to port directly. So previous work has shown that the main overheads are caused by the memory encryption engine, which deals with the reading and writing to and from the EPC memory and the on-chip cache, Enclave transitions, which means e an e call into the enclave and o call back out, or or an o call out to the out to the application, and paging, which we said should be avoided at all costs. So first, we wanted to measure how the size of the working set affects the overhead from the memory encryption engine. We allocated a buffer inside the enclave. We filled it with ones. And we accessed all the bytes to sum up the ones. We did this over 500 loops, with all accesses happening inside the enclave. We varied the total size of the buffer. We created three versions of this experiment, one that ran natively, one that ran on SGX, and one that runs on graphene. We also had a version that performs both writes and reads. And from our observations, we can see that graphene and SGX run very, very close together. The lines are almost on top of each other. So that's the red and green lines. And just for the red and green lines for SGX. And just below that are the orange and blue lines, which are for graphene. So we saw that these lines begin to diverge from native at about six to eight megabytes 
and our CPU was running had a L3 level cache of eight megabytes. So we drew the conclusion that when our buffer fits into the cache, we avoid cache misses and avoid going back to main memory, which means there's no memory encryption engine overhead from that, from that cache miss. As the buffer gets larger, we have more cache misses and we see the overhead from the memory encryption engine. And that's when we see the lines diverge from the native version at about six megabytes. So there's no performance penalty of running inside an enclave if our working set fits in the cache. So next we wanted to look at what if there was only a portion of overall work that happened inside the enclave with the rest taking place outside. So what if we had a large application but a small working set that had to uh, run things inside the enclave? So we took the same read buffer, we filled it again with ones, and we made a copy of it outside. We split the original 500 loops so that some of the loops, and therefore some of the memory accesses, happen outside, and some happen inside the enclave. We varied the percentage of loops that occurred inside the enclave, and saw that when, when the buffer size fit into the cache, the size of the working set when it fit into the cache, there was all um, the time taken was almost constant for the work done. When the buffer size didn't fit into the cache, then there was a linear slowdown as more and more work was done inside the enclave. And the 75 megabyte buffer for graphene was constant, but it ran at about 10 seconds, which is the same number that it took for the blue line when all the work was happening inside the enclave. So this is because graphene has to pull everything into the enclave. So all of the loops are actually in the enclave all of the time. So if the application code and data is larger than the cache, but the working set fits in the cache, manual porting is faster than graphene since we don't have to pull all the code and data into the enclave. But this means that having our working set inside the enclave and having the rest of the program outside, we would need to transition in and out of the enclave to get our work done. So next, we wanted to look at what effect enclave transitions had on performance. So we took a four megabyte buffer that fit in the cache, we filled it to ones, and we initialized it inside the enclave. We used a nested loop outside to call into the enclave and get the sum of a chunk of the numbers at a time to, to get the total sum, but we did it a chunk at a time. The inside loop does the work and it returns the sum. And by varying the size of the chunks we process each time, we can vary the number of transitions. The number of transitions is inversely proportional to the number to the size of the to the size of the chunk of numbers read each time. So the smaller the size of the chunk we sum up each time, the, the, the greater the number of transitions that happens. And the larger the chunk of numbers that are processed each time, the fewer transitions that need to take place. We can see that at about 40 transitions, into the enclave, on the graph it's on the very left, it takes at about 5.7 milliseconds. And for the same workload with 10 million e-calls, which is on the very right of the graph, it takes about 57 seconds for the same workload. So based on the last two experiments, we can see from the overall time taken that the cost of e-calls is much higher uh, so both of the graphs are in time taken in seconds. And we can see that the overhead from transitions dominates the overhead caused by the memory encryption engine. So we did another experiment to test the, to test the effects of transitions on SGX compared to graphene, and whether there was a rate of transmissions that favored porting over using a shim 
We kept our working set inside the enclave at two megabytes, so it fits into the cache. We made sure our total application doesn't fit into the cache with about a 70 megabyte buffer outside to take advantage of not having to pull everything into the enclave. Uh, first, the inner buffer does all, does, does all, all the summing up. Uh, so we, we start at, on the outside and we call into the enclave to get the result. We vary the number of transitions again by varying the size of chunks that are read each time in each call. And we do this uh, 10 times. So we perform 10 loops of the summing. Then we sum the outer buffer and we do this 1000 times. So all 10 loops of the inner sums are done first and then all 1000 loops of the outside sums on the larger buffer. At the intersection point, we can see that the rate of transitions per second is about 118,000 transitions per second. So fewer transitions, i.e. to the left of the graph, it might be better to go with porting and more transitions to the right of the graph, and it might be better to go with a shim. We repeated this experiment. We doubled the outside enclave work to 2,000 loops. This doesn't add any more transitions. We're still doing 10 loops in the beginning of the summing up inside the enclave. Uh, graphene, we can see, did almost, uh, the, the line for graphene, the time taken by graphene has almost doubled since it has to pull all 2,000 of those external loops into the enclave. And again, at the intersection point, we can see that this takes about 116,000 transitions per second. So we repeated this experiment again with 3,000 loops and all the way up to seven or 8,000 loops, uh, external loops. And we saw that it seems it doesn't matter how much work is being done inside the enclave in proportion to outside the enclave as long as the transitions per second to the total transitions over total time taken is about 110,000 transitions per second. So through our work, we saw that programs may perform better if manually ported as opposed to run in a shim if the working set of data inside the enclave is smaller than the cache size, so we avoid expensive cache misses, but the total working set of the application is larger than the cache size. This is better for manual porting since shimming would pull the entire application into the enclave, causing more expensive cache misses. The application has relatively few enclave transitions. We've seen that enclave transitions affect performance much more than the overhead from the memory encryption engine. And lastly, the program spends more time on the larger data set outside the enclave. This would benefit from manual porting because the memory reads and writes that occur outside the enclave would be faster for porting than the in-enclave reads performed by the shim, which would need to do in-enclave reads for all of those uh, external reads. For most other cases, it may be better to use a shim. Our work was concerned with the performance of programs, and while there may be added security concerns when using a shim layer, we did not explore them. And while we think our results are general, our tests were only done on graphene. If you'd like to take a look at our code, you can follow this link.